Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. There's even a brand new Brigadier General tier where you can get a shout out on a Commander's Quarters episode that's dedicated to you. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Quarters studio. Welcome to the show. Magic the Gathering has an absurd number of cards. I mean, last time I looked, I think it was around 22,000 or, or probably more than that at this point. But yeah, there are a ton of cards in Magic. And because of that, there are some pretty weird and wonky and actually really cool interactions that are, well, pretty unexpected. So on today's episode, I'm going to be taking you through a really cool one with Moon Mist, a card that got me saying, wait. You can do that? So what exactly is this unique and unexpected interaction? And no, no, it's not not werewolves. That That's the expected one. <laughs> Anyways, let's jump into it to find out. So for those of you that don't know, Moon Mist is an instant that costs one in a green and it says, transform all humans, prevent all combat damage we dealt this turn by creatures other than werewolves and wolves. And in parentheses, only double face cards can be transformed. So obviously the original intention for this card when it was made in Innistrad was, hey, we've got these, you know, human werewolf cards that can flip over into werewolves. Sweet, we'll utilize this card as kind of like a one-sided fog that can also transform your team. So this is a very unique card in that it gets around the actual requirement for those human werewolves that, you know, no spells were cast last turn, that kind of requirement. You basically just say, hey, I don't care if no spells were cast, I'm going to flip my werewolves unexpectedly, and now I've got a combat trick that is also a fog. Let's take a look at a quick example before we jump into how this card can be utilized in a completely different way. So let's take a look at Huntmaster of the Fells, a very popular human werewolf from back in the day. At least when I was playing Standard, it was very popular. It's a 2-2 human werewolf that says, whenever this creature enters the battlefield or transforms into Huntmaster of the Fells, put a 2-2 green wolf creature token onto the battlefield and you gain two life. And at the beginning of each upkeep, if no spells were cast last turn, transform Huntmaster of the Fells. So again, there is that requirement in how this card actually is intended to flip, but Moon Mist is a way to get around that by saying, hey, I'm just going to force all humans, which Hunt Master of the Fells is to transform. And the reason they specified humans is because the front of the card is a human, but when this transforms on the backside, it is no longer a human, it's just a werewolf. Because on the backside of the card, we've got Ravager of the Fells, a 4-4 werewolf to trample that says whenever it transforms into Ravager of the Fells, it deals 2 damage to target opponent and 2 damage up to 1 target creature that player controls. Yeah, there's a reason this card was really good in standard. Regardless, again, Moon Mist was a different and again, a somewhat unexpected way to actually be able to transform your human werewolves out of nowhere. And speaking of werewolves, let's talk about how Moon Mist actually interacts, or should I say, doesn't interact with werewolves these days. New werewolves like Kessig Naturalist from Innistrad Midnight Hunt and Innistrad Crimson Vow, well, they work a bit differently. Because Kessig Naturalist, like the other new human werewolves, utilize the daybound slash nightbound mechanic. Daybound says if a player casts no spells during their own turn, it becomes night next turn. So pretty much the exact same thing as what we saw in Huntmaster of the Fells, but we are actually keeping track of day and night separately from just individual creatures. Because when it actually switches from day to night or night to day, it actually switches for everything. So once it flips from day to night, this flips into Lord of the Uvenwald, and on this you can obviously see Nightbound, which says if a player casts at least two spells during their own turn, it becomes day next turn. So again, the same requirement to flip back as what we saw in Huntmaster of the Fells, but again, the day and night cycle applies to all creatures, not just this one. But again, because of this entire thing becoming a new mechanic with Daybound and Nightbound, Wizards made a decision on a certain card, which was Moon Mist, and it wasn't the most popular one. Let's take a quick look at the Wizards article on the Daybound mechanic, which again was brand new with the first Innistrad set of this year, Innistrad Midnight Hunt. As it becomes day, all double face cards with Nightbound transform to their Daybound faces. As it becomes night, all double face cards with Daybound transform to their Nightbound faces. 
In other words, these double face cards should always be in sync no matter who controls them. What's more, permanents with daybound and nightbound can't transform any other way. Sorry, Moon Mist fans, the bound part of Daybound and Nightbound is serious. Basically, for whatever reason now, Moon Mist works with the old werewolf cards, but does not work at all with new ones. I mean, outside of it being, you know, a one-sided fog, it can't transform them. Even though you know it says, in other words, these double face cards should always be in sync no matter who controls them, well, that's not the case if Emerwolf is in play, but Moon Mist is somehow different. Let's not get into that. But though Moon Mist seems to have been nerfed for werewolves moving forward, it has not been nerfed for something that was completely unintended with this card. Because there are a lot of transform cards out there that aren't werewolves at all. In fact, according to this count on Scryfall, it appears that there are exactly 130 cards that transform that aren't werewolves. Now, keep in mind that not all of these are humans, so they can't just transform inherently with Moon Mist, though obviously there are ways to make that actually happen, but we'll get to that here in a bit. But of course, out of these 130 cards, there of course are humans, and in fact, about 46 of them, I believe. And yeah, each of these have their different requirements for actually flipping and transforming, but Moon Mist just says, hey, who cares about those requirements? We're just gonna flip you anyways. Now, some of those requirements aren't all that hard to meet, but other ones, like, you know, Jaren Corrupted Bishop's requirement, that's a bit more difficult to meet, and actually just using Moon Mist to flip it can be incredibly beneficial. Again, Jaren's requirement to flip is at the beginning of your end step, if you have exactly 13 life, you may pay four black black if you do transform Jaren. So that's a pretty steep requirement, and Moon Mist essentially gets around the need to actually even get to 13 life, and saves you mana to actually flip this. And when it flips, it flips into, of course, Ormondal the Corrupter, which is a Massive creature, 6-6, six, six, Flample, Lifelink, Sacrifice another creature, draw a card. Yeah, just a beastly demon all around. And as I mentioned before, even if you don't have a human on the front of the card, Moon Mist can still help out in combination with cards like Masked Nexus, Arcane Adaptation, and Mere Entity. Each of these are essentially ways to give all your creatures every creature type, or a specific creature type, again, like humans. So for those transforming creatures that aren't humans, as long as you've got one of these in play, or another card that can change their creature type, you can flip them with Moon Mist. So if you've got one of those in play and you make this lovely lizard egg, now a lovely lizard egg human, etc, 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 instead of paying 10 mana to get more counters on this to flip it, you can just flip it with Moon Mist. And of course it becomes the very cute Ludovic's Abomination, a 13-13 with Tramp. Now, obviously, this is a lot of workarounds for this type of a deck, but hey, if you want to build a transform tribal deck with Moon Mist as the focus card of it, go for it. It seems like a lot of fun. And actually, there are some really powerful things that you can do, and let me talk about what might be the most powerful transform card out there for a deck like this. And that card would be Azor's Gateway, a legendary artifact that costs two and it has pay one, tap, draw a card, then exile card from your hand. If cards with five or more different converted mana costs are exiled with Azor's Gateway, you gain five life, untap Azor's Gateway, and transform it. So that's actually a pretty hefty requirement. You basically have to activate this five times, and you have to be able to exile five different cards with different converted mana costs. So this can take a lot of time and a lot of investment, and let's say you even get four of those and then an opponent removes this, that was a lot of work for basically nothing. But again, the payoff for this card can be absolutely massive being Sanctum of the Sun on the back. It can tap to add X man of any one color to your mana pool where X is your life total. So yeah, in a game of Commander, let's say you're at your starting life total. Yeah, it can tap for 40 and that's a very powerful thing. Now, of course, do work with Moon Mist again in this hypothetical transformed tribal deck. You do need another workaround because obviously this is not well, a creature, and so therefore you can't just make it a human. But there are plenty of ways to actually make this into a creature first, with things like Animating Fairy, the Black Staff of Waterdeep, and Rise and Shine. Animating Fairy, or should I say the Adventure Bring to Life, says target non-creature artifact you control becomes a 0-0 artifact creature, put 4 plus plus 1 counters on it. And then with the Black Staff of Waterdeep, you can essentially pay 1 in a blue to tap it to make it into a 4-4. Moving on, Rise and Shine basically does the exact same thing as Bring to Life, but you can also overload it for all of your artifacts. So again, in this transform deck, if you've got multiple artifacts that want to transform, well, cast this where it's overload cost, get all them into creatures, change them into humans, and have fun moon misting them. Now again, is this transform tribal deck a powerful and competitive deck concept? No, but it's fun and it's unexpected. So now let's move on and talk about what commanders out there might make a good commander for this type of a deck. And the first one that came to my mind was Sisse Weatherlight Captain. 
Sese is a 2-2 human soldier that's going to get plus and plus one for each color among other legendary permanents you control. And by paying Wooberg, you search a library for a legendary permanent card with converted mana cost less than Sisei's power, put it on the battlefield, and shelf your library. So Sisei's got a few things going for her for this kind of a build. First off, she's a five color commander, so obviously you've got access to everything you need. You aren't going to be missing out on any transform cards with this commander. And of course, she can tutor for some fantastic things for this build, again with things like the Black Staff of Waterdeep being legendary, Azor's Gateway, Jaren, etc, etc. There's a lot of fantastic transform cards and cards that interact with these in this way. Regardless, if you don't want a five color commander, another option might be Captain Sisse. Captain Sisse says, tap, search your library for a legendary card, reveal that card, put in your hand, then shuffle. So this Sisse tutors for cards and gets them into your hand. And actually, in a somewhat unexpected way, Tovalar Dire Overlord might make a good transform commander for this type of a build. Because aside from Moon Mist, this is actually another way to transform your creatures. Tovalar has, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more wolves and or werewolves, it becomes night, then transform any number of human werewolves you control. Now, you will need something like Maskwood Nexus or one of those changeling spells to actually make it so that your creatures are human werewolves, but yeah, this is yet another way that you can do it. Again, is this going to be a powerful or competitive deck concept? No, but is it going to be fun and unexpected? Absolutely. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one.